good afternoon i hope and i believe all of you are doing well uh quick note whether the audio visual is all good Hello, hi, Dr. Vandana. All right. So happy afternoon, everyone. Sunday afternoon, and we are going to have this uh, buffet lunch, basically, where we are going to talk about top 10 food science and radiology. All right. And it's going to be mixed bag, basically. I think that this would be more than 10 signs, not uh, just 10, but I think more than 10 signs, but the ones which are very, very important. What's the plan for today is, uh, so today, 27 March, this is the first class that we have. The second class, which is the special class, which is basically the free class on the app. The unlock code is Dr. Nikita. We are going to have our KBMD top 10 mnemonics, right? Basically, the live MCQ quiz. What is KBMD? Con Banega MD, the live quiz, okay? And at 9 p.m., we have the part two of the radiology rapid revision, where it's a two-hour class, 9 to 11 p.m. Uh, the remaining part of radiology, whatever is the best that we can revise, we would be revising at 9 p.m., all right? Uh, I hope all of you had a good time giving the All India mock test. Uh, how was your performance and how was the mock test? Everybody who gave the test... All right, uh, FM sessions for FMG. See, the NF100 episodes that I'm taking, they are specifically for FMG students also. So I hope you are following that, okay? Right, we are also launching the previous year question bank where there are three years, past three years papers of NEET, PG, INICT and FMG, very, very important. We would also be starting now from 6th of April without clarifications uh, series that is, um, you know, only catering to the doubts of the students. We will have dedicated sessions for that. We are also launching MBBS Prof 1, that is preparing for university exam, preparing for next. Everything would be covered basically to give the right guidance to the first year MBBS students. Now, open house session, uh, most likely we will have on Tuesday, okay, day after, uh, Ratne, we will have the open house session, right? And uh, you have these uh, new batches which are starting on 30th March, Need PG-22 High Yield Theory Revision Batch, basically till May 15th. So in this one and a half months, we'll try and revise the most important uh, things, um, okay, in this one and a half months. And we also have FMG 2022 High Yield Revision and MCQ Batch. That is also starting on March 30th. Okay, that's also starting on March 30th. Now, uh, starting with your foot signs, the first one here, what is this? Right, mouth watering, movie time. The first sign is basically popcorn, right? So this is a popcorn calcification. The investigation shown here is mammography. So this chunky, chunky calcification like the popcorn in the mammography, that is fibroadenoma, right? Popcorn calcification is seen with fibroadenoma. Look at this one, popcorn calcification in the lung. Great summer. I'm, I'm glad to know that. The popcorn calcification in the lung, it is seen with pulmonary hematoma okay so recent fmg question that is pulmonary hematoma shows popcorn calcification right what are we seeing here this is also your last year fmg question uh image was given the clinical history was given that there is a postmenopausal female around 52 years old right when you have this postmenopausal female with a lesion showing this calcification like a popcorn in the pelvic x-ray think of fibroid right it's a uterine fibroid like fibroadenoma shows popcorn calcification you have a uterine fibroid also why is this not a why is this not a bladder calculus or a cycle calculus because it is generally completely white okay it is completely white okay next one so this is your same in the what happened sorry Where were we and what were we discussing? Something happened. <laughs> okay. 
Right. So look at this one. Uh, this is your CT scan showing a lesion in the lung with the calcification, the popcorn calcification. This is your pulmonary hematoma. Okay. Look at this sign. What sign do you think is this? Mouth watering, right? So I think we are getting, we, we would get a lot of uh, cephalic phase of acid secretion today. Yes, this is the Oreo cookie, right? This is the Oreo cookie. And where do we see this Oreo cookie sign? Oreo cookie sign is seen with pericardial effusion. Okay, Oreo cookie sign is seen with pericardial effusion. Now, what is the Oreo cookie? You have the black layer above, the black layer below, and in between you have the white layer. Look at the CT scan here as well. In the CT scan, this is the heart. Surrounding the heart, you have the fat, which is the black color. Then you have uppermost also the black fat. In between, in the pericardium, you have this gray colored fluid. That is pericardial effusion. So fat on either side of the effusion. So the on the x-ray, you will see this black, black color. In middle, there would be the white fluid. So look at this one. What are we seeing here? This is the white fluid here. In between this black line and the black line overlying. So black, white, black, like the Oreo cookie, black, white, black, that is the pericardial effusion. So basically it is the white fluid in between the two black layers of fat. Okay, two black layers of fat. Okay, that is pericardial effusion. All right. Hello. What, what appearance do you think is this? What is this radiograph showing? What is this appearance? Right, this is a candy which is legged. So the legged candy appearance. Look at the legged candy appearance. Basically the pointed end that we get with the legged candy appearance. Look at this uh, metatarsal bone which is showing this pointed appearance. And legged candy appearance is commonly seen with leprosy. It is also seen with rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis and the charcot's joint. That is basically neuropathic joint. So this is uh, common with your leprosy, psoriasis, rheumatoid and also neuropathic joint. So that's your leg, the candy appearance. All right. Next, what are we seeing here? So basically you have the egg here and this is the egg. Okay, this is basically the egg with the narrow superior mediastinum. So this is egg on side appearance, also called as egg on string appearance where do we see the egg on side egg on string appearance remember our mnemonics congenital heart disease the appearance we are transpositioning the egg to the side transposition transposition of great arteries right it is seen with transposition of great arteries which is a cyanotic heart disease presence in the newborn especially if the mother has diabetes mellitus the risk is increased okay this is egg on side or egg on string Next one, this is one of the images that we have seen before as well. What is this? Yes. Look at this rice grain and look at this rice grain. There's a calcification. Okay, so there is this rice grain calcification. Absolutely right. So that is the rice grain calcification which is seen with Cystisarcosis, right? The muscular, when it goes into the muscles, it gets calcified there. So all this, you can see it is along the muscle fibers direction, right? It is along the muscle fiber direction. That is your rice grain calcification, cystisarcosis, okay? Cystisarcosis. Next, what is this? These are the millet seeds. Look at the bilateral tiny, tiny opacities in both the lung fields. So basically, this is Miliary mottling. Remember, not all miliary mottling is TB. Miliary mottling has a lot of differentials. You have TB, you have occupational lung disease like TB, that is silicosis, sarcoidosis. It might be seen with metastasis, thyroid, RCC, choriocarcinoma, right? It, uh, it can be seen with uh, uh, many other conditions. Mitral stenosis leading to hemosidrosis in the lung. 
that can have a miliary modeling, right? And what does not present with miliary modeling? Remember, your PCP pneumonia does not present. We saw that in yesterday's plus class. It's not seen with PCP pneumonia. PCP pneumonia will have bilateral perihilar ground glass opacity. Okay. Next, what is this? So look at the image here. You can see the multiple lines here, like the multiple, the onion peel, right? The onion skin or the onion peel appearance. So this is your onion peel periosteal reaction, which is seen with Ewing's sarcoma. Though not specific for Ewing's sarcoma, but common for our exam. Let's remember Ewing's sarcoma. It basically indicates your aggressive lesion, right? You have like the onion skin, the multiple lines, onion skin, onion peel appearance, Ewing's sarcoma. Where do we see the onion skin appearance of the lysosomes? Recent KBMD, we have discussed this. Where do we see the onion skin or onion peel appearance of the lysosomes? Lysosomal storage disorder. You have a sac, a pota, a gora banke or barke of onions. That is your te sacs. Okay. Ayushi, remember that is te sacs. It is not nemenpix. Nemenpix is your zebra bodies. Okay. This is your te sacs. Okay. That is your te sacs, which is what gangliosidosis? GM1, GM2. GM2 gangliosidosis, hexosaminidase A is affected, is deficient. There is cherry red spot without hepatosplenomegaly, exaggerated startle reflex. All of that is your tay sacs. Okay. Next one, what is this? And what is the investigation which is shown? This is basically the apple core, right? Apple core having this narrowing, irregular narrowing, and the shoulder like appearance. The investigation is the barium enema, single contrast or double contrast barium enema. This is double contrast barium enema because you can see the air, the black air along with the barium. This is double contrast, both white and black color. And this is basically your apple core, the narrowing that we are seeing here, like the apple core, suggestive of carcinoma colon. Okay, that is suggestive of carcinoma colon apple core appearance okay apple core appearance next one right we all know this is banana but where do we see this banana sign and what is this image showing basically Banana sign basically is seen with your neural tube defect, right? It is seen with your neural tube defect, any neural tube defect. It might be associated with Arnold Chiari, right? Anything. It, it is basically neural tube defect. So banana sign, basically this image is showing the fetal skull. Okay, this white color that you are seeing, these are the fetal skull bones. And this one is basically the cerebellum. This cerebellum, if I outline this cerebellum here, let me show this cerebellum. Okay, right. So look at this one. The cerebellum is like the banana and it is wrapping around the brain stem. Why does it happen so? So imagine if uh, there is the neural tube defect. Right. If there is the neural tube defect into which the contents are herniating, that causes a pull on the brain. So the brain structures come down. So the posterior fossa has a lot of crowding of the structures. So that is why the cerebellum is congested and in a small space it tries to fit by curving around the brain stem. So that gives your banana sign basically of the cerebellum curving around the brain stem and this is seen with neural tube defect. Similarly, uh, similarly uh, what is the other sign in the neural tube defect? Uh, ortho mein banana sign, that is your banana fracture, right? Pages wagera mein. The banana fracture, that is pages. Lemon sign, right? Look at the lemon. The lemon is round here and anteriorly the lemon has this concave surface. So the same reason because of the pull of the structures that brain is not giving pressure on the frontal bones. So you will see some concavity in the frontal bones like the lemon. That is the lemon sign, okay, the neural tube defect. Next one, what is this and what is the diagnosis?
This is the bunch of grapes appearance, right? The bunch of grapes appearance basically. And this bunch of grapes appearance, what are we seeing here? There are these cystic spaces in the lung. Okay, there are these cystic spaces in the lung. What are these representing? These are the dilated bronchi. So basically this is seen with cystic bronchiectasis, right? The dilated bronchi, bronchiectasis, they give the bunch of grapes appearance, right? What is the other sign in bronchiectasis that we see apart from the bunch of grapes appearance? We get the tram track sign, right? The parallel bronchus and we get the signet ring sign. Okay, the tram track sign and the signet ring sign is seen in bronchiectasis. Honeycomb is in HRCT is reserved for your ILD. Some books also mention like this bunch of grapes is also like a honeycomb. Okay. So the clinical scenario will tell you basically what are we talking about. Yes, in obstetrics, the bunch of grapes is your molar pregnancy, right? H mole. Next one, very, very important. Uh, my favorite, that is the coffee bean. So coffee bean appearance. What do you see in the coffee bean? So basically you have the three lines which are converging here. So that is basically your coffee bean sign. So this is basically showing the coffee bean appearance. You can see the proximal colon is dilated. Look at this one, the descending, the transverse ascending colon. So this is basically sigmoid volvulus. Okay, this is sigmoid volvulus showing the coffee bean sign. We saw yesterday in the plus class on barium enema, what sign would sigmoid volvulus show? What sign does the sigmoid volvulus show on barium enema? So if you will do the barium study, the barium goes into the rectum and then at the point of volvulus, it gets halted, right? It gets stopped. So that basically gives your bird beak appearance or the bird of prey appearance. Okay, bird beak or the bird of prey. Coffee bean nucleus, very good, Tashar. Your Brenner's tumors, absolutely right. Okay. What is this sign that is shown here? What is this sign here? This is not the vada pav. Right. This is your hot cross bun. Hot cross bun. Right. Hot cross bun sign. And like the hot cross bun, this is the cross. We see this cross appearance in what structure of the brain is this? This is basically pons. Why do I call it pons? Because behind that I'm seeing the cerebellum and I'm seeing the fourth ventricle also. So this is hot cross bun and it is seen with multi-system atrophy. MSA, cerebellar type. MSAC, multiple system atrophy. That is where it is seen. Can someone identify this black rounded structure? What is that representing? What is this black rounded structure here? This is basilar artery, right? This is basilar artery. Uh, okay, so this is a basilar artery in front of the pons. Okay, basilar artery. Is it normal or is it thrombosed? Is it normal or is it thrombosed? Please remember in MRI, T2 weighted MRI, the normal flowing blood gives a flow void. That means no signal. So this is normal. This is not thrombosed. Okay, this is not thrombosed. So let's see some anatomy here. Can you identify there is this one structure that you can see? Bilateral decry, SA X structure. What do you think are these structures? Anatomically, what are these? Anyone, so if, if you ask me to mark, this is what I am asking about. Optic, uh, think logically. Okay, think very, very logically. Dekho, ek to dekho, Dr. Shri, if that would have been optic, we are saying that this is the pons. Does your optic nerve come to the pons? No, it does not. So this is not optic. Ayushi, let's think um, eighth nerve. Okay, eighth nerve. 
where does the eighth nerve go the eighth nerve goes basically to your inner ear right you have the seventh eighth complex which goes laterally this is where is your petrous bone yahan rahega to yahan pe aapko basically dikhega aapka seventh eighth nerve okay no worries think logically i want you to think logically ah uh, someone said peduncles theek hai peduncles what are peduncles peduncles basically connect your midbrain pons and medulla to the cerebellum so basically you will see going from midbrain to cerebellum pons to cerebellum medulla to cerebellum where are you seeing this this is going outside the pons you can see it is going even outside the pons so this is not peduncle also artery if this would have been artery aditya then you would have seen like this flow void wagera kuch aisa dikhta circular someone had got it right i think tushar yes this is the fifth cranial nerve this is the trigeminal nerve yes charles which arises from the pons the thickest cranial nerve that is trigeminal you can see the relation medial to the medial to the temporal lobe you will have the meckel's cave here through which it goes okay so this is the fifth cranial nerve this is the temporal lobe okay this is the temporal lobe all right ठीक है सो ये हो गया हॉट क्रॉस वन एम एस ए सी गोइंग टू दिस वन वट इज दिस अपियरेंस योर वट इज दिस दिस इज बेसिकली अ ब्लॉक ऑफ चीज विद लॉट ऑफ होल्स इन इट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज स्विस चीज अपियरेंस ओके दिस इज कॉल्ड एज swiss cheese swiss cheese not the cottage cheese so uh, this is your swiss cheese appearance and the swiss cheese appearance is basically seen in ivp also with polycystic kidney disease the autosomal dominant one which has a lot of large large cyst in the kidney so when the contrast comes into the kidney okay so when the contrast comes into the kidney this gives the filling defect so everything the rest of the kidney gets filled with contrast these cysts they are not communicating with the excretory system so they do not contain the contrast and they give basically the filling defects okay so basically these give the filling defects these represent the cyst in the kidney so this is your ultrasound image basically showing the kidney with a lot of cyst why do i call them cyst because fluid appearing black this is the kidney showing the lot of cyst so this is your autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease this is appearance in the nephrogram phase nephrogram is the early phase of ivp then you have baad mein the excretory phase what appearance do we get in excretory phase what appearance do we get in excretory phase the large cyst separating playing the calyces that is called as that is called as spider leg appearance right the spider leg appearance the spider leg appearance all right okay next one what is this this is salt and pepper okay this is salt and pepper appearance salt and pepper one we have read it is in this one that is a skull appearance which is hyper parathyroidism which shows the tiny tiny punctate lytic lesions with the spared bone appearing white so in hyper parathyroidism we get the salt and pepper skull which is also called as pepper pot skull okay here the salt and pepper in this mri this is the tumor that you are basically seeing here uh, surrounding the carotid that is your carotid body tumor chemodectoma which basically comes under the category of paraganglioma so which tumor shows the salt and pepper appearance that is paraganglioma the salt the black color is the flow void these are very very vascular tumors paragangliomas are highly vascular so they show a lot of flow voids and because of the increased vascularity they can have hemorrhage as well so hemorrhage appears white like salt and flow voids appear black so that is paraganglioma remember gives the salt and pepper appearance okay next one what is this this is basically sausage look at the sausage the swollen thing so where do we see sausage digit 
Cram cracks uh, amazing. Heartiest uh, congratulations. And all the very best for all your future endeavors. Thank you so much for dropping in and letting us know about you. Yes, sausage digit is seen with psoriasis, right? You get the swelling. It can also be seen with dactylitis, basically like in TB, which is called as spina ventosa, right? So this one which you see, basically there is a lot of soft tissue swelling. Even this finger looks swollen. So sausage digit, psoriasis and spina ventosa. There are multiple causes. What is this? Very, very mouth watering, right? This is uh, basically chocolate. What is that? This is a cyst but that we are seeing in the ovary. You don't have to identify that it is ovary. It will be given basically. You can also see that this is transvaginal sonography from the image. So right, we are talking about the chocolate cyst. Chocolate cyst in the ovary, it is seen with endometriosis, right? It is seen with endometriosis. Now, why this is chocolate cyst? Why this is not simple cyst, anyone? Why this is chocolate cyst? Why this is not simple cyst? Simple cyst means clear fluid and clear fluid appears black on ultrasound. Here you can see that the cyst has multiple these low level echoes and that is why this is the chocolate cyst. Basically a hemorrhagic cyst. Okay. Right. What is this? Honeycomb. Right. Honeycomb. Where are we seeing the honeycomb? We are seeing the honeycomb here. We are seeing the honeycomb here. So basically you have multiple air filled cysts along with the interlobular septal thickening, that is the honeycomb. So, multiple air-filled cysts stacked one above the other. This is your ILD, UIP pattern, right? Honeycombing basically represents fibrosis, the irreversible stage. So, honeycombing is seen in UIP pattern of ILD, right? It is the UIP pattern of ILD. Classically, it is predominantly in the subplural part, the peripheral part where we see the honeycombing. Okay. Next one. Oh, another mouth-watering thing here that is ice cream cone. So, this is basically the ice cream cone appearance. What part do you think is this? Where the CT scan image you are seeing, what is this basically? What part is this? No, we are not talking about schwannoma here. This is something else here, the ice cream cone in the image. Konsa part hai ye body ka? Right, this is the temporal bone, right? This is the temporal bone. All this which you are seeing here, these are the mastoid air cells. Basically, this is the external ear. Uske andar ye aapko mastoid wale ear cells hai, ye middle ear ki air hai. So, these are the ossicles. These are the bones in the middle ear. So, you have the malleus and the incus, right? The joint between the malleus and the incus that has this ice cream cone appearance, which is basically normal. The normal joint between the malleus and the incus. If they tell you that ice cream cone is lost, that means that ossicular discontinuity ho gayi. Recent KBMD? Recent KBMD we discussed. What did we discuss? If there is ossicular discontinuity, what type of tympanogram do we get? AD type. How does the AD type look like? Basically, the high mobility, the high compliance, right? What type of joint is this MI? MI is a sad event. It's a saddle joint, right? All of this we have discussed. And this which you are seeing medial to the middle ear, this one which you are seeing medial to the middle ear, that nerve would be, what nerve is related? That is the facial nerve okay that's the facial nerve that we are seeing there okay going to next one ice cream cone otherwise in mri cp angle we also see in vestibular schwannoma right you guys were right also it is seen with vestibular schwannoma next what is this pepsi sign which is also called as the yin yang sign so like you have pepsi you have the red color you have the blue color in Doppler, basically in a vessel, you see both red and blue color, red and blue color. Basically, what does this color indicate in color Doppler? What does the red color indicate? What does the blue color indicate? What does the color indicate in color Doppler? 
now not aortic dissection yen yen this is your uh, your sign only so we have yen here where is yang the uh, the color basically indicates the direction of the blood flow it indicates the direction of the blood flow so any vessel particularly should, should show red color or blue color it should not show both together so when it shows both the red and blue basically means in a single vessel you are having both a direction flow that means there is some turbulence happening and this is seen with pseudo aneurysm right pseudo aneurysm what is pseudo aneurysm limited by the adventitia so when the blood comes it goes in this direction the blood moves around and it comes back in this direction so you can see the blood is flowing in two directions so that is why you get the yin yang sign opposite yin and yang white and black red and blue together yin yang sign which is seen with pseudo aneurysm okay which is pseudo aneurysm all right next what is this another something very yummy donut right the donut sign where are we seeing this donut sign where do we see the donut sign look at this one okay look at all this basically donut sign is your intersusception right it is intersusception so intersusception basically you will have a bowel within bowel appearance you have one bowel and you have other bowel one bowel and other bowel so inner bowel and an outer bowel that is intersusception that gives the donut sign so basically in donut there are two circles the other name for donut sign can also be called as target sign right the donut is inner circle and an outer circle where else can we see this donut or the target sign yesterday's plus class we had discussed pyloric stenosis inflammatory bowel disease as well okay pyloric stenosis and inflammatory bowel disease okay next one what is this this is a pear and inverted pear shape so this is your pear or inverted pear uh, shape of the bladder look at the urinary bladder here gray color fluid containing that's the urinary bladder now why is this urinary bladder shaped like this normal should be smooth rounded like this right normal should be smooth rounded like this if you have anything outside in the pelvis which is compressing on the bladder from outside so the bladder gets elongated right because it has to adjust in that space because something is compressing from outside so it gets elongated like a pear so that is called as pear shape or it is also called as tear drop extrinsic compression pelvic lymph nodes pelvic lipomatosis uh, hematoma abscess anything and everything can give your uh, pear uh, shape or tear drop bladder it's not with your tb okay it's not with tb specifically so you have the multiple lymph nodes here basically which are compressing on the bladder so giving rise to this shape okay next one what is this what sign is this basically this is mri and this is mri breast christmas tree yes yen it is neurogenic christmas tree has a lot of diverticuli bladder right that is neurogenic bladder yes this is the linguini sign and where do we see the linguini linguini is basically your spaghetti or pasta like this the flat pasta and you see this there's a membrane jaisa kuch dikh raha hai like the linguini basically like this linguini sign this is seen in the ruptured implant ruptured breast implant intracapsular rupture or extracapsular rupture very good staffy that is your intracapsular rupture it is still contained within the capsule right it is still contained within the capsule so it is seen in intracapsular remember linguini in is your intracapsular rupture of the breast implant linguini sign all right what is this so this is your figure of 8 also called as cottage loaf right this is the cottage loaf and where are we seeing this cottage loaf basically what is appearing here what are we seeing here 
यू कैन सी दिस लिवर का पार्ट विच हैज गॉन अप टू द डायफ्रोमेटिक डिफेक्ट सो बेसिकली इन अ पेशेंट ऑफ ट्रॉमा इफ देर इज डायफ्रोमेटिक ट्रॉमा डायफ्रोमेटिक रप्चर यू कैन सी दिस कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन इन द ऑर्गन गोइंग अप द ऑर्गन गोइंग अप देर विल बी दिस कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन दैट गिव द कॉटेज लोफ साइन इन द हार्ट वेर डू वी सी द कॉटेज लोफ हार्ट में कहा दिखता है इसे कॉटेज लो बेसिकली यू हैव दी हार्ट एंड अब दैट यू हैव दिस एबनॉर्मल चैनल ड्रेनिंग इन टू द सुपीरियर वीना केवा दैट इज योर पल्मनरी वेन टोटल एनॉमलिस पल्मनरी वीनस कनेक्शन नीट पी जी ट्वेंटी वन क्वेश्चन द सुप्रा कार्डियक टाइप राइट विच इज बेसिकली योर टाइप वन टी ए पी वी सी दैट गिवस योर कॉटेज लो और फिगर ऑफ एट और स्नोमैन हार्ट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके yeah this is a bit of a difficult one i had never seen this uh, basically apan ne dekha nahi hai isko kya bolte hain this is called as head cheese okay some this is called as head cheese appearance or the head cheese sign so you have the meat basically which has dark areas which has light areas which has very light areas this is not a bread slice this is the meat which is called as head cheese appearance so basically in the hrct chest when you see the areas which are white okay you see the areas which are black you see both alternating you see the areas very white less white you see black everything together that is called as head cheese that is basically your mixed densities are seen in the lung and this is seen with hypersensitivity pneumonitis right this is seen with your hsp okay this is seen in hsp okay next ye wohi hai aapka head cheese basically showing this multiple areas dark light light areas you have the dark areas you have the light areas right this is your head cheese hypersensitive pneumonitis what is this this is the egg shell okay this is the egg shell so you see the calcification only in the periphery that is called as your egg shell calcification multiple causes multiple causes of egg shell calcification you have sarcoidosis you have silicosis amyloidosis fungal infections many causes remember it is not seen in bronchogenic carcinoma okay it is not seen in bronchogenic carcinoma um bj medical alveolar proteinosis will give your crazy pavement appearance you will have the ground glass with the septal thickening right that would be your crazy pavement nahi ye cheese nahi hai tushar basically ye misnomer hai head cheese is not a cheese it's a meat basically okay so egg shell calcification sarcoid silicoid that is it so that was about the food signs let us quickly see what all food we have seen in the buffet today so you have popcorn calcification fibroadenoma pulmonary hematoma and fibroid then you have oreo cookie sign pericardial effusion right fat black on either side then you have the white fluid then you have the licked candy appearance leprosy neuropathic joint very common egg on side appearance tga rice grain calcification cysticercosis miliary mottling multiple causes onion peel periosteal reaction ewing sarcoma apple core carcinoma colon the narrowing that is carcinoma colon banana sign neural tube defect lemon sign neural tube defect then you have the bunch of grapes appearance cystic bronchiectasis coffee bean sign sigmoid volvulus cross bun multiple system atrophy you have the swiss cheese appearance that is polycystic kidney disease salt paper paraganglioma salt paper hyperparathyroidism sausage digit psoriatic arthritis chocolate cyst assist with the echos in the ovary endometriosis honeycomb egg stacked one above the other uip pattern ild ice cream cone malleus incurs joint normal one you have the pepsi sign yin yang sign pseudo aneurysm donut sign intersusception one bowel inside another bowel inverted pear shape or pear shape extrinsic compression of the bladder linguini sign intra capsular rupture of the breast implant cottage loaf diaphragmatic rupture in the heart it is supra cardiac apvc head cheese appearance multiple areas multiple densities white gray black 
hypersensitive pneumonitis and you have the eggshell calcification multiple causes not seen in bronchogenic carcinoma okay so never mind six questions from the mnemonics metnomic that's great let me know what questions you got from the mnemonics that we have discussed in the test whatever test you have given barium minima what sign uh, in uh, sigmoid valvulus the barium goes up and gets stopped like a bird beak bird beak or bird of prey sign okay bird beak or bird of prey sign all right new food right even i have learned a lot of new food from this right and this is just a partial buffet there are many more signs which are there so i hope you have enjoyed this mouth watering session of uh, uh, basically the food science and radiology thank you so much everyone for joining in i'll see you uh, at 5 pm for the kbmd the top 10 mnemonics ka kbmd 5 baje or 9 uh, o'clock we have the uh, plus class radiology rapid revision all right thank you and goodbye take care keep